Hey, so I'll bring you guys math industry, and we are going to take a look at multiplication and division properties. So, one point a few weeks ago, we did a video on addition and subtraction properties. But in this video, we're going to do multiplication and division properties. So, to start off the video, let's start with the multiplication. So, with the multiplication property, it explains that if segments or angles are congruent, then they are like multiples that are congruent. Because multiplication property works with measurements like angles and segments that have the same length distance, size, and they must be congruent. Here's an example where that might happen. So, right here, there's a problem. It's raining cats and dogs. Well, the real problem mathematically is this given to us. A is the midpoint of CT, and O is the midpoint of DG. We can say is AC congruent to DO? Well, we understand that A is a midpoint of CT, which means these two are going to be congruent. We could also say that O is a midpoint of DG. We can say that these two are congruent. And it's saying that AC is congruent with DO. We can definitely say that because these two are going to be congruent with these two. So basically, we understand this part, but there is another question to complete this problem. Is segment CT congruent with segment DG? Well, the thing is, we said that this is congruent, these two are congruent, these two are congruent, and it also says that this and that is congruent. We could also say that these two are congruent, and vice versa. The thing is, is CT congruent with DG? Well, since the multiplication thingy says that it works with congruent angles and congruent segments, and it appears that all the things mentioned are congruent, we can say, yes, it can work out for us. This is definitely going to work for us. The reason why is, we can say, multiplication property. The reason why we did that is we had this and this, add this and add that, add this and add that. And what we did is we combined it as a whole. So we added this and that to make a whole in a statement, and added this and that to make a whole in a statement. Not a whole, a whole, as in together. So that is an example when we use a multiplication property. Let's use another one, but with angles. So here are our angles. So what's given to us is BD is an angle bisector of ABC. And it also says on the bottom, FH is an angle bisector of EFG. The question is, what can we conclude? So instead of the problem just giving us a question about is CT congruent with DG, we actually have to make up our own conclusion. If you try this problem on your own and get a different conclusion than we got, you still might not be incorrect because there are many solutions and many statements you can make as long as you can show it and prove it. So, here's an example. With an angle bisector, we can explain that you can have two congruent angles right here. 
because an angle bisector will bring you that. Also with these. So what we can say is if these are congruent because of this thingy right here and these are congruent because of an angle bisector, we can definitely include, I mean conclude, that A, A, B, C as an angle is going to be congruent and the same thing as saying E, F, G. And our reason for that is multiplication property. I'm going to write the letter P. So basically, the reason why we did that is we had congruent angles and also more congruent angles. And basically, we made a bigger factor or a bigger figure. This giant thingy or this giant angle is going to be equal to that giant angle because you can prove that by showing with smaller congruent angles. That is definitely showing the spirit and showing how to demonstrate the multiplication property. The multiplication property is useful when you're trying to find figures or objects that are the same size with segments and angles and your answer or your conclusion will become a bigger figure. When you use multiplication property, you usually find in your given phrases words that repeat like bisect, bisect, midpoint, midpoint, and so on. So this is when you would use it, and that is how you would use it. Making it bigger! <laughs> Who will challenge me? I'll take care of this. You think just cause you fused you're a match for me? Don't make me laugh. Enough waiting around! We are now done with multiplication. Now, let's look at the opposite of it, or should I mean the division property. So instead, we're learning about the opposite of multiplication. So with the division property, if segments or angles are congruent, then they are divisions that are congruent. To make this understandable, unlike multiplication, we are trying to make congruent things bigger to add into bigger congruent things. With division, you have a big congruent thing put into a smaller congruent thingy. Here's an example. Okay, so problem given to us. Segment DF is going to be congruent with segment GJ. That is a weird way of saying it. GJ? <laughs> E is a midpoint of DF, and H is a midpoint of GJ. <laughs> what can we conclude? Well, we said earlier in division, in this division of operations, like D1 basketball, D1 football, well, it said that it likes to make big congruent things into smaller congruent things. In that case, if this and this is congruent to this and this, G, J, what we want to do is kind of condense it down a bit. Or should I say, we level the place down a bit. If E is the midpoint of D, F, and H is the midpoint of G, J, and it looks like they're both congruent, we can conclude that D, E, and we could also say that G, H are congruent. They are smaller, so we can say D, E as a segment is congruent 
to GH as a segment. We can explain this by saying division property. I'm going to write the letter P. And that is basically what division wants us to do. Turn a big object or measurement and try to find the same congruent smaller objects. Let's look at one more problem, but with angles. Okay, so here's our angles. Given JK is going to be congruent with MK. OP overpowered as a segment is bisecting JK and MK. What can we conclude? Well, we said earlier that JK and MK are congruent. But with this angle bisector in the way, it's yeah, in the way, we can say that we have O as a point and P as a point, as midpoints. When you have an angle bisector or when you have a segment size bisector, you will always have a midpoint. So you might want to keep in mind about that because midpoints will give you two congruent angles. Here's an example. It is saying from here to here is going to be congruent. And it also says from here to here is also going to be congruent because these two are midpoints of this and that. The other thing is if JK is a whole and if MK is a whole and we want to kind of condense it down a bit, we can definitely say that JO and also MP are congruent but smaller congruent measurements. So we're going to say J-O is going to be congruent with M-P, but there are two smaller congruent segments when you transform them from two bigger congruent segments. And that is basically what we do for division, trying to make things a bit smaller but they're both the same measurements between two or more objects. So now we know about division, trying to shrink things down a bit and find the smaller two congruent pieces. Okay, now we know in this video the multiplication property and the division property. The division property is also going to give you double word problems. Like midpoint, midpoint, bisect, bisect. And with division, you make and find the smaller congruent segments or angles. With multiplication, you find the much larger segments or angles that are congruent. And that explains the video. I hope this video has helped you understand multiplication and division properties. Thank you for watching Topping Your Life Math Industry. Like and subscribe. Yay!